Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sister Rhoda. Thank you, Dr. Tena, for, uh, for the powerful message that uh, the Lord has inspired you to share with us this morning. Indeed, uh, uh, this uh, provoking us to give our all uh, to the service of Christ. Revelation 2 verse 10 says, uh, Be faithful unto death, and you shall receive the crown of life. Uh, so may God help us indeed. Uh, we've been challenged uh, in all our conduct. Let us uh, commit ourselves to the Lord. I will share the screen. Uh, maybe we can make use of a hymn. Uh, I was thinking, uh, maybe sisters, I don't know if you're ready. I know you have a wonderful song that uh, came to my mind. This uh, elder was preaching triumphantly. The church shall rise. Uh, it's in any way convenient for you to share or... Maybe you'd like to share it afterwards. Yeah, we'll do it afterwards because we've got to get things ready. <laughs> okay, no problem. No problem. All right, let's have a word of prayer and uh, we will get into the reading. Just sharing the Okay, so we are in chapter 24, is not this, the carpenter's son. Let's pray. A loving Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we humble ourselves in your presence this morning. Father, we are so unworthy. Uh, looking back, now we have uh, betrayed you in many ways. We have denied you in many ways. We fall short of loyalty. Our words, our actions, and our thoughts have not been uh, pleasing to you always. Lord, I pray that you may have mercy upon us this morning. We want to thank you for the message, timely message that we have received. To provoke us, Lord. We've been provoked. We've been convicted. Lord, we pray that you may convert us. Oh, Lord, we would like to be like those saints of old. Like Job who said, though you slay me, yet I will still trust in you. We want uh, to be the men, the people of our time, who will not be bought or sold, who will stand for the right, though the heavens fall. Oh Lord, I pray, we know in us we, there is corruption. We can't do these things in our own strength. We pray, Lord, that the spirit that worked in the saints of old may work in us today. Give us such devotion to, 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 to your truth. Give us such devotion to the gospel. Give us such devotion to evangelism. Give us such devotion to you, Lord, above all things. And as we open this uh, reading this morning, I pray that it will not be just a mere reading. We ask that this reading may uh, bring conviction and conversion. Bless each and every one of us. We pray that the same spirit, the spirit of truth, will inspire the writing of your word and these readings 
may interpret these words for us, that he may strive with us as we listen to these words, inspire every comment that will be made, that everything we do may tend to your honor and to your glory. This is our prayer this morning, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, because of our time, we'll just go straight to the reading. Um, sisters will give us a song uh, at the end. Is this, uh, so he says, is not this the carpenter's son? Let me just go down. I think we finished somewhere here. Um, yes. Um, I remind me, I'm sure this is where we finished yesterday. Is that correct? DA 240.1? Yes. Oh, wonderful. All right, so, so just a quick recap. Um, yesterday we did uh, discuss, I, I think we only, only read one paragraph yesterday, and there was uh, a lot of discussion on this paragraph. We noticed that uh, after uh, the rebuke uh, that Jesus gave that Sabbath, as he was now, explaining the prophecy that he had read, that he had uh, declared that it had been fulfilled in their hearing. Uh, he goes on to, uh, to, to, to speak about, uh, uh, to point out rather their unbelief, how they were waiting for a sign. They were excited because uh, they wanted some miracle done for them. Uh, but there was so much unbelief in the people. And Jesus was rebuking their unbelief. He cited the case of Naaman, the widow of Zarephath. Um, miracles were done for them because they believed God. So yesterday we did cover a lot, um, spoke about unbelief. I don't think um, anyone can doubt how um, detrimental unbelief is. I mean, every sin has its foundation or its root in unbelief. Every sin that is offensive to God has its root in unbelief. And so if we have unbelief, we cherish unbelief, we have nothing to expect from God. So I pray that we will make the prayer of that uh, man, the father of a man, uh, of, a, uh, 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 of a boy uh, who was, uh, uh, if you remember the story, I think it's found in the Gospels, um, in Mark, uh, I can't remember the chapter now, the disciples tried to pray for this young man, but they could not cast the evil spirit out of him. And then when Jesus came, he rebuked his disciples. But also, he speaks with the father of the child. Um, he says to him, do you believe that this can be done? The father says, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. This is such a prayer that um, we need to make. Sometimes we think we believe, but we don't believe. And so the father submits himself to Christ and says, help my unbelief. It's a sin to have unbelief. Now, let's pick up for where it says, uh, speaking of how God has always protected his servants, just as how he protected Christ. Christ was about to be 
uh, uh, cast head uh, 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 down the, the precipice, the, the headlong. They, they, they wanted to destroy him. They wanted to get rid of him. So Excuse God me. is always... Yeah, I know. Yeah, sorry, sorry, Elder. You yesterday you you stopped and you had posed a question which you said you were going to explore this morning. I think before we mm. go to read. Right. Um. What was the subject matter again? Uh, anyone remember? Oh, I think I remember. I think I remember, yes. Um, it was to do with keeping the commandments. Is that correct? Yes. Because the was... Jews, mm -hmm. the Jews had claimed, or rather they uh, 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 claimed that they were keeping the law. But now they are about to commit murder. Yeah, the question I was, how do we... Keep How the law. shall we keep the law? Yes, 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 I remember. Now, um, I've been blessed. Um, um, you know, Sister White has written a lot on this subject. Um, um, but God also uh, inspired the two elders um, uh, during the time uh, of uh, Sister White, uh, the two elders whom God uh, also gave the message of righteousness by faith was um, Elder Jones and uh, Elder Wagner. Uh, if you grab some of their books, they write powerfully on, um, on this issue. Uh, one of the books that um, uh, I... I was reading that I was really blessed with, which I will uh, recommend to any of us. It's called Glad Tidings. Glad Tidings. It was written by, by Elder Wagner, commenting on the book of Galatians. Galatians. So uh, it, it, it's such um, uh, uh, an inspiration. Now, the question that is addressed there uh, is essentially um, centered on this subject. How shall we keep the law? Now, I wanted us to just quickly go to the book of Galatians. Just uh, We just pick uh, one or two things there. I mean, we don't have time to uh, wound, um, take, uh, we don't want to take uh, a long detour. So uh, if we turn to the book of Galatians, um, notice how the apostle, um, you can almost sense the burden that he had to explain this to the people of Gal um, Galatia. By the way, it, uh, the Galatians, uh, it's interesting actually because history tells us that um, this is modern day France. Um, uh, the the apostle was writing to these people. Now notice uh, from verses one to five, um, he introduces uh, rather his ministry, where he gets his ministry from. And it's important to understand, you know, when you come to, to the Bible, or just reading this, this letter alone, or reading the Bible, it's important to understand who is the authority. So Paul makes it clear, first and foremost, that he is an, he is an apostle. And he is an apostle not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father. So he, he wasn't chosen by men, it's one thing also to remember that um, these days we have so many people who call themselves apostles. Now the question we need to ask ourselves, who chose them? So the message that Paul is now 
are giving. He's saying, this is, this is not something that I made up. Now notice, verse 6 now, he plunges himself into the subject matter. He says, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ and to another gospel. Now, someone may ask, what was this another gospel that, uh, that the apostle was referring to? Now, let's read now from verses 7. Um, verses 7 to verse 9. If somebody read, uh, read for us. Galatians chapter 1, verses 7 to verse 9. Galatians chapter 7, uh, 1, verses 7 to 9. Which is not another, but they be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be a curse. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be a curse. Okay. Powerful. Thank you for the reading. Now, the gospel that the apostle had presented to the Galatians is the same gospel it presented to the Corinthians, to the Romans, where he says, I determined not to know anything than Christ and him crucified on the cross. He preached the gospel of Christ. Grace, the, 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 the text there in verse 3 says, Grace be to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world, according to the will of God and our Father. Now, if you now follow up now, because the, the, the gospel that some other people then brought to the Galatians, they were now telling people that, in fact, for you to be accepted in the brotherhood, in the commonwealth, um, uh, of the gospel, you have to be uh, circumcised. So they were preaching the gospel of circumcision. Now, Paul is actually saying it's not another gospel because there's only one gospel. And this is the same gospel he says to the Romans that... It, it, is the gospel he says I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation so the subject matter of Paul's uh, 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 sermons or discussions was Christ now these people were heathens Galatia was a region uh, uh, um, yeah, as I said it's modern day France these people were heathens so when he preached Christ to them and what he had done for them, they believed. And they were received into the brotherhood. But now the Jews now from Jerusalem came after Paul and left and says to them, you need to be circumcised. Because if you do not receive circumcision, then you are not fully or you are not part of the commonwealth now notice some people here uh, think that Paul was preaching only uh, of the uh, ceremonial laws that uh, 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 had been done away with uh, that Christ had um, basically made of no effect but now notice now when you skip to like I said I'm just hitting the the, 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 the key points because the question is how shall we obey the law and the apostle makes it very clear here now skip now to Galatians chapter 3 um, uh, in Galatians chapter 3 
he is now speaking of the law. Now, notice from verse 10 and 11 uh, to 12. Uh, rather, we can just we, we can just read uh, to, from verses 10 to 14. Um, this is where we get the idea because the question I said is, how shall we keep the law? The Galatians, they had been deceived by these brethren, false brethren, Paul says, who had come after them and preached another gospel, which was not really another gospel because it was actually a perversion of the gospel of Christ. In Galatians chapter 3, verse 10 to 14, it reads this. It says, for as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident. So no one can be justified by the law. We'll come to explain why. He says, the just shall live by faith. So this is another instance where you see Paul repeating again this important point. The just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, what is the apostle speaking of here? So he says, it is evident that we are not justified by the law. So the Jews... In a way, they thought they would be justified by keeping the law. But this is not evident. Why is that Why is that impossible for us to be justified by the law? Because we have all sinned and we have all fallen short of, uh, 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 of the requirements of the law. He states this again in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Uh, Roman chapter, uh, Romans chapter 3, rather, verse 23. Now, so he's basically saying this. If you try to approach God by keeping the law, you are attempting an impossibility. If you try to approach God by keeping the law, you are attempting an impossibility. Because the statement there, which says, cursed is everyone. You notice the, the text that we read there from verses 10. It says, the person who does not fulfill the whole law is cursed. So if it was possible for us to be made righteous by keeping the law, then we were supposed to keep the whole law. And David says, this law is broad. This law is broad. And in us, we have no capacity to keep it. And this is the point that the apostle was emphasizing. And, and, and even now, it's something that, unfortunately, not many God's people fully understand. When we say we are keeping the Sabbath, for instance, Or when we ask people, do you keep the Sabbath? The question is, what do we mean? Do these people fully understand what we're expecting of them? Now, when Paul came to the Galatians, he wasn't preaching the law. He preached Christ. Now, there's a reason why Paul didn't preach the law. If it was a Jew who had gone to Galatians, they would have preached circumcision first and then the law. They, would, they had, in fact, added uh, 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 a, whole, a whole lot of the law. They supposedly thought that they were enriching the Ten Commandments. But those were the commandments of men. 
So Paul is saying, if we are tempted to come to God, or if we try to make ourselves righteous by keeping the law, we are attempting an impossibility because we have no capacity to perform the whole law. Now, um, I just wanted to, to, to read this one and then um, I, 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 I'll put a conclusion, then I'll open for, for, for comments and hear others what others think. Now, notice um, he continues in verse 15 to discuss this issue. Now, in verse 24, it's famous because it has been discussed in, in our circles. Yeah. Um, so some now have concluded, uh, maybe let's just read verse 24. Uh, maybe um, from verse 21 um, to verse 24. If I ask somebody to read Galatians chapter 3 from verses 21 to 24, because people now then get confused. Are we saying the law is in the way, is, is against us? What really are we saying? Paul always had to explain himself because the reason why he, wasn't, he, he, he was preaching Christ it wasn't because Paul was making void the law of God. Remember, this was the same charges they charged Jesus. Uh, they, they, they charged, uh, they said Jesus was not preaching so much the law of Moses. The same charge they gave to the apostles, even to Paul specifically because he was the apostle to the Gentiles. They were charging him. Why are you not telling these people to, 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 to keep the law? This was their, 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 their charges over and over again. But Paul is explaining himself. Uh, can somebody read for us from verses 21 to 24? Chapter 3. Chapter 3, Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily, Righteousness should have been by the law. But the Pause this. So the apostle now says here, is the law then against the promises of God? Definitely not, because the law of God is his character. This is the foundation of his government. But now the point is, how do we become righteous? How do we become just before God? How do we find peace with God? If we could find peace by keeping the law, then we didn't need Christ. We were going to continue to try. Okay, let's go to verse 22, to verse 24. But the scripture has concluded all under, the, under sin <clears throat> that the promise of faith of Christ Jesus, Jesus Christ, might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the Lord was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ, unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Amen. Amen. Now, somebody needs to explain what it means the law was our schoolmaster. And by the way, this law that the apostle is discussing here, some in our circles have concluded that Paul was speaking of the ceremonial law. No. Paul was speaking of both the ceremonial and the moral law. I need to make that very clear. Sister White also makes that very clear. Uh, I can share quotations on that. Now, how does he mean that the law was our schoolmaster? How he explains this in another place. The law in Romans chapter 7 is like a mirror. It is like a sign that points you to Christ. How does it do that? The law, it tells you that adultery is a sin. Committing adultery is a sin. 
Now, if you do commit adultery, the law can help you. The law tells you that the seventh day is the Sabbath day. The rest, Sabbath day rest, the day of the Lord, that he is sanctified and made holy. But if you break the Sabbath, the law can help you. It is only a sign that points you to Christ. Christ is the man who was revealed to take away sin. If we had been left with the law only, then we could be sure that there was no hope for us. So it says the law, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, bringing us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. So then when I realize that I'm a sinner, the law clearly states that the sinner shall surely die. You see, the law is very clear. This is why it says we were dead under the law. When, when the apostles say we were, we were dead. Now, notice, it says we were dead when the law was revealed. Or sometimes it says we were dead under the law. What this says is if Christ had not come, we were condemned to die. Because the man that sinneth shall surely die. But now Christ comes. He takes away the sin, which is the transgression of the, uh, of the law of God. So what I need to do, I need to look at Christ. Christ gives me now the power to keep the law. I said earlier, the reason why Paul was not preaching the law, he was preaching Christ. He says, I determined not to know anything other than Christ and him crucified. When we get this, brethren, we need to receive Christ. The Bible states that those who receive Christ in them, he gave power. This is power to keep the whole law. Power to keep the son. Power to not commit adultery. Power to not lie or to steal. But we have a situation, this is the Jewish religion, where people, they want to keep the law and hope by doing so, they have a relationship with God. It's impossible. When we have faith in Christ, when we receive Christ by faith, when Christ dwells in us through his spirit, then we have power to keep the God, uh, uh, God's law. I, I'm just saying this in a nutshell, but there's so much that the apostle goes through in the, in the book of Galatians. So the reason why he was uh, writing with so much passion, with so much, you can see that the apostle was very disappointed with Galatians. Because the, he had preached Christ to them. They had believed. They had seen so many miracles, so many signs. Christ had worked through Paul. And they could see this was the power of God. And they enjoyed the fruits of their faith. But now Paul says, what has happened to you? I preached Christ to you and you believed. And you were happy. You had peace with God. Do you now think that you can be made righteous by keeping the law. Now, this is not, he is not in any way saying, now forget to keep the law. No, but he is saying, it is the faith that helps you, the faith in Christ. It is the faith in Christ that gives you power to keep the law because we can't do it. I, I don't know if, if, if this is making sense to anybody, I'll open for comments, yeah? And uh, I'll also share some other text. I don't know if if uh, there's any questions or uh, any uh, uh, anything Pastor. that is not clear. 
Yeah, good morning. I think what it is that, good morning, saints, and happy Sabbath. This text, I suppose, because it is written, it's been translated in English, but it is also another language. It came from the Greek. And you know when you know when you were little and you were at school, especially when you're at school back home, you would have the main teacher, and then the teacher would use a child, an older child, to be the uh, their, their second in command to teach. So what it was, the the Jewish people were given the law of God and they were meant to um, be an example in their speech and in their conduct but because they are not the primary teacher they ended up writing their own laws like the Torahs and making it very making it hard for those within their system as as well as those outside to actually gain the lesson of getting to know God. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus, our true example, the model teacher comes along and he then brings those lessons in a, in a way that when the students, which is now um, the Gentiles, as well as the Jewish nation, gets it, they now are able to understand. And so when they talk about the law being the schoolmaster, I, I think it, it's the way that the Jewish nation was bringing the law. They were making it rig really rigorous, hard to be taught. But when Christ came now, this is how it's meant to be done. So when the, the, the Gentiles came to Paul and Paul taught them the gospel, he didn't teach them the law as it was presented from when the children of Israel had the law. He showed them the law that if you love the, the, law, the law giver, you will naturally keep the law. And therefore, you are not under the same law that the Jewish nation um, experienced, where they had to, they then had the ceremonial law on top of that, because Christ is our true example. But because the G Gentiles were now looking at the Jewish nation, because they, they had systems, and I think, you know what the funny thing about human beings? <laughs> We want to do things hard. We want to do, we, we want to copy. And just like the Jewish nation copied the, um, the pagans with the things that they were doing, now, even though the Gentiles had, had, had the example of Jesus Christ and the apostles, they were feeling under pressure by the Jewish, the old Jewish nations to copy what they were doing. And Paul is saying to them, no, you're not under that, that, that level of the law. You've got Christ. If you love him, you will naturally keep mm. his commandments. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Sharon, for those thoughts. I mean, brethren, um, it is... Um, Oh, yes, I think uh, Mother Teresa shared the quotation as well. Yes, uh, just to, to add, um, I wonder if you wanted to read, uh, uh, share the quotation, uh, Mother, or maybe you wanted to comment on it. Oh, no, go ahead and, and read and comment on it. Thank you. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, thank you for, for sharing about grace. Let me read first. Yeah, it says law and grace cannot be separated. Absolutely. It is only by the imputed and imparted righteousness of Christ that men can be saved. So imputed and imparted. The cross is the guarantee that the law is immutable and our salvation lies in the blood of the Lamb. He who is trying to reach heaven by his own works in keeping the law 
is attempting an impossibility. Man cannot be saved without obedience, but his works should not be of himself. Amen. Christ should work in him to will and to do of his good pleasure. If a man could, be, could save himself by his own works, he might have something in himself in which to rejoice. The effort that man makes in his own strength to obtain salvation is, is represented by the offering of Cain. All that man can do without Christ is polluted with selfishness and sin. But that which is wrought through faith is acceptable to God. When we seek to gain heaven through the merits of Christ, the soul makes progress. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we may go on from strength to strength, from victory to victory. Amen. I think uh, there was uh, some more to that quote, but such a powerful quotation. This is why you see the apostle uh, makes a great deal in the book of Galatians to explain how this thing works. And he, remember, in verses 1 and 2, he says where he got this gospel from. He wasn't taught it by the other disciples. In fact, he recounts his story in chapter 2, that after his conversion, he went to Arabia. He was there for, uh, uh, for three years. And he says, this is where these things were revealed to him. He had revelations when he was in the wilderness. Jesus himself taught him. He says, the gospel I'm preaching you, to you, I received it from God and from Christ himself. So, so you can see the desperation and the frustration that he has with the Galatians. And I'm sure God can be frustrated with us uh, 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 when we, we, we teach people. Uh, you know, I can't, I can't seem to, to find words, um, but you understand sometimes we do emphasize a lot on, um, on the law. We need to move away from the Jewish religion where we preach the law to the people. Now, what this does, it, um, God works in miraculous ways. We know for some, some people, they do it with sincere hearts. This is why we have to lift up Christ. We need to make people behold the Lamb of God. When people see Jesus, when people receive Jesus, when they receive Jesus, he gives them his spirit. Now, this is what he now says in chapter 5. That these are these fruits of the spirit. And you can see the fruits of the spirit that they are actually in harmony with the law because he is the lawgiver. And the fruits of the flesh now, he says, they are the people who are breaking the law. So if we are doing in our flesh, in our strength, we can only produce the fruits of the flesh. Yes, we might appear to keep the Sabbath from the outside, but the law is deeper than keeping the Sabbath from the outside. The law digs deeper into the heart. The law has to deal with the heart. We need the love of the Son. And that love of God's law, we don't have in our carnal nature. The carnal nature hates God. It is enmity with God. Unless the carnal nature is converted through reception of Jesus and receiving his spirit, we have no strength in us. We may keep from the outset like the Jews. This is why I say the question is not whether or not the law should be uh, uh, kept because that is settled. God emphasizes how important his law is. But we cannot be saved by keeping it in our own strength. We need to receive Christ. And that's what these people on this Sabbath day refuse to do. And that is why they were now going to commitment. They thought they were keeping the Sabbath. They thought they were keeping the whole law. But now they were going to commit murder because they were hearts and rejected his anointed one. Um, I see Elder Tenor, you have your hand. 
Yeah. Yeah, the, um, when, when man sinned, there are two things that happened to him that made it impossible for him to keep the law. And I believe this is what the, um, the Galatians didn't understand. Number one is that when Adam and Eve sinned, their very nature changed. Right. Secondly, they became a prisoner to the devil. They, 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 they were no. It's just like someone who has been taken a certain substance for a period of time, and when they then decide to give it up, they found that there is a struggle. They are addicted, and so Adam nature changed and this was then handed down to 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 the um the coming in generations so what i'm saying is that for us to be free from this prison the price needed to be paid which is the mm -hmm. price so first the price was paid secondly we needed a power that was beyond ourselves a supernatural right. power because because the nature has now changed, has now been weakened, it could it cannot resist sin on its own. And this is why when Paul says he was perfect where the law is concerned, but at the same time he was there shedding innocent blood, committing murder, killing the Christians. So whilst you think you're keeping the law, because of that sinful nature you're actually committing sin at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Paul is saying to these Galatians, listen, you can't just get up and correct your behavior without Jesus Christ. Look to Jesus Christ and you shall be saved first from yourself and then you'll be saved from sin and the ultimate right. sin. So this is what we need to understand. We cannot keep the law in our own strength because of our sinful nature. And this is why Christ promised to send us the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, it can be uh, 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 summarized than you 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 did, Elder. Thank you for 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 that point, uh, Elder and Vicky. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I was just thinking, Elder, could it be that we can find ourselves in the position of the Jews in this sense that we, we are encouraged to keep the Sabbath? I mean, we say we love the law, but we are encouraged to keep the Sabbath. We are encouraged to come to church. We are encouraged to participate in to church. To pay tithe. <laughs> we are encouraged to retain that everything we are being encouraged to do. But at the same time, we say we love the law. We keep the commandment. We are God's people. Could it be that some of us are probably deceived in thinking that because all these things that I'm doing, I'm actually keeping the law. Uh, but everything that we do, we are having to be encouraged to do it. In other words, if that encouragement is removed, is removed, on our own, we wouldn't do it. We wouldn't do it. But we need that constant every Sabbath encouragement. Please come to church next Sabbath. Please come to come to prayer meeting. Please come to uh, afternoon Bible study. Please pray. Please, can you take this position? Please, can you do this? Please, can you do this? Please. And that's the. Oh, and then we say, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. But if we were soldiers of the Lord, ready to fight, would we need the encouragement every day or every Sabbath? Or could it be that some of us are deceived? in thinking that by doing these things at the behest of his some encouragement, we are actually doing what God requires us to do. Without us realizing that the fact that we have to be encouraged and then we say by our own mouth, 
that we love the Lord, we love his commands, we keep his commands, we are actually demonstrating that we are deceived. Have mercy. Thank you for sharing this though. Now, I need to make it clear that the things that we are asked to do, the commandments of God, you know, the apostle says they are not grievous. The, the, the problem is, again, I have to emphasize that the law has to be kept. All his precepts and judgments are for us to keep. We have to return time. We have to return our offerings. We have to do evangelism. We have to help the poor. We have to do service for God. And the Jews were doing these things. Nicodemus himself, he was one of the Sanhedrin. He was doing these things, giving alms. If, in fact, the Jews, if there was any class of people that was so serious about tithe or about any other injun uh, injunctions, it was the Jews. They were even paying tithe of tithe of mint, of herbs. So they were so scrupulous. So if the law, if righteousness could come by the law, surely the Jews could have been righteous. There was no need for God to bypass them. Because they were doing, they, in fact, they'd extended the law. They were so zealous. This is why Paul in Romans chapter 10 says they are zealous, but not according to knowledge. So, so, so in our uh, endeavors, I want to say this. Uh, maybe somebody, uh, whilst I'm uh, uh, saying the last statement here, somebody go to John chapter 6, verse 29. We have to do things for God. So it's not a question on whether or not we should keep the law. The law has to be kept. The point is, how is it to be kept? How are we to retain tithes? and offerings to God. We do it when we receive Christ. Anything that is not prompted by the love of Christ is sin. Anything that is not of faith, this is why the text is there, anything that is not of faith, because we only have one faith, which is the faith of Jesus Christ. Anything that is not of that faith, it is sin. So whether I spend all my years returning tithes and offerings, if I have not received Christ, I'm doing it in vain. Because it's not on faith. But the person now who returns tithes and offerings joyfully because they have the love of Christ in their hearts, these people do not grumble. These people do not complain that the conference or the church is asking too much. Now, the question I'm asking, how are we keeping the law? And let's read John 6, 29. Again, here the Jews, they try to, 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 to they want to do something for God. And they wanted to do some works for God. So we're not saying, uh, therefore, uh, we're just, going to ignore the works. It's faith and works. The faith of Jesus works. It is him who works in us, as the verse uh, I was stating earlier. Uh, uh, John 6, 29. Anyone who is there, please. John uh, chapter 6, verse 29. Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. So the work of God is to believe in Christ. Before we even start to think of health reform, diet reform, or dress reform, lifestyle reform, the work of God, the first work is to believe on him whom he has sent. 
and this is the truth that has been so neglected. Christ had not been has not been lifted up, and Christ, uh, uh, Satan rather, is happy when people attempt to please God without Christ. He knows their efforts are in vain. Um, I see time is now a minute past. Was there any other comments at all? I'll probably uh, uh, just um, read one paragraph, small paragraph. Uh, I know we, we took some time. Um, thank you, Mother Kezia, for reminding me, but I uh, ended up taking uh, some time on this. Uh, I, I hope it's making sense, but um, if anybody is not clear or has questions or contributions, please do let me know. We're just going to read one paragraph. Uh, speaking of how God has always protected these servants, um, as he did um, his son that day, this promise is even for us. Let's just read that small paragraph and uh, we'll pick up from there tomorrow. If somebody can read, uh, we say, so angels. So angels protected Lot and led him out safely from the midst of Sodom. So they protected Elisha in the little mountain city. When the encircling hills were filled with horses and chariots of the kings of Syria, so the great host of his army, of his armed men, Elisha beheld the near hill slopes covered with the armies of God. Horses and chariots of fire round about the servants of the Lord. Amen. 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 Um, this is where we're going to pick up tomorrow. You know, God has always protected. Uh, in fact, Psalms 34, verse 7 says, The angel of the Lord encampeth around them that fear him um, and keep his commandments. So, 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 so God is his angels assigned to watch his servants. Elisha that day, he prays a prayer. He says, Lord, open the eyes of the young man that he may see. We might not see with our eyes, but if we fear God, if we walk with him and we fear him, we can be sure that God assigns his angels to watch over us. We should not be so much careful. Uh, you know, sometimes um, we are afraid because we... We're fearful for our safety. Uh, if God is leading us to places, let's trust him with our safety. And we have so many testimonies, so many testimonies. I think even a book quite controversy. I mean, I'm sure we can all testify. But um, I, I was uh, uh, impressed uh, reading about Charles Wesley. Um in the great controversy. He was such, uh, after his conversion. By the way, it's interesting because he was serving God for a long time, but he didn't have peace with God until when he went to America. And um, uh, he noticed the deportment of, um, uh, 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 what was the name? Uh, what was the name of uh, this class of people? I think they were from Germany. The people who had such peace and they had a storm on the sea. When Charles Wesley was recounting the experience, he says these people were had such peace, whilst the English brethren were crying and and, and screaming in the storm. These brethren were had such peace on their faces. The, the fathers, the mothers, and the children. And after the storm, he, he asked one of them, he says, were you not afraid to die? And they answered him, they said, we're not afraid to die. Our, our, uh, we know that God is in charge. I'm just paraphrasing that. They say, we're not afraid to die. Our women are not afraid to die. Our children are not afraid to die because we have our faith in Christ. And he was challenged. So he went on that vacation 
on that tree. The Moravians, yes, thank you, El. On his way back, uh, he was being tortured. His soul was being tortured because he, I mean, brethren, you can tell, I can tell, when you don't have peace with God, even though you're doing things for God, you know that you don't have peace with God. If Christ was to come today, you know you won't be able to meet him. So he's doing ministry until one day um, he was assisted. You know, uh, the, the, the story is a bit fade, it is fading a bit in my in my mind. But I believe there was a brother who assisted him to receive Christ. And from then on, Charles Wesley says his life was never the same again. It's a new dawn. He saw in Christ a man who had died for his sin. All these things that he had been trying to do for himself, he realized that they were vain. He was such a sinner. He accepts the sacrifice of Christ and he makes it his own. His ministry was such a powerful ministry from then on. He shares of how sometimes people would come to him, they wanted to kill him, God somehow would protect him. Sometimes people wanted to beat him up and somebody wants to hit him in the head and suddenly he touches him gently and softly and the man says, oh, his hair is so soft. Somebody wanted to hit him, but for some reason, the thing that he was going to hit him with breaks as if it was like a straw. And all these experiences he's now recounting when he's walking with the Lord. And we know these are the people who are behind the movement called Methodist today. They had such a serious passion for evangelism and God protected them. There was there's so many stories. There's another people you find there, some other people that you find who were doing God's work, servants of God. People like Joseph Hoof, he was a Jew, um, uh, but then converted uh, and received Christ. And he was protected in many ways by God. But I'm sure we also have our own testimonies of how God has sent his angels to protect us. Maybe when we have time, we can allow some people to share. Well, I will end here. I wonder if there's any closing comment today. We're supposed to finish at seven. I know on Sabbath, usually we indulge a bit. And uh, we're going to ask Tackless Sisters to give us a song if there's no any other comment. So tomorrow we are going to pick up from uh, where he says, saw so angels. I mean, uh, saw so in all ages. Sister White also comments about how William Miller also was protected as he was doing ministry. Martin Luther, uh, all these reformers. Um, God is still in the business. Even in the last days, we know that God has assigned uh, uh, his, his angels to wash over his children. Our bread and our water shall be sure if we remain faithful and loyal. We should not take care, we should not stress over our main stress should be are we walking with the Lord? Yes. If we have him, <laughs> we should smile at the storms of this life. I mean, I, I won't stop, so I'll finish here. So, Tackle Sisters, please, uh, you can sing a song for us to close. The song is called Triumphantly the Church Will Rise. The stars down 
Comes with anticipation The trembling clouds Know it's time Musicians are tuning their instruments and the singers are humming. Here comes the bride, triumphantly. The church will rise, victorious beams in, in the skies. See the Savior. and I pray that uh, we will be part of uh, uh, the church triumph and we will see these promises fulfilled. It is my prayer. Let's have a closing word of prayer. Um, uh, can I ask uh, Mother, Mother Kessia, do you mind praying for us to close, please?
Yes, let's ask pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, what a privilege, what a joy to spend time this Sabbath morning uh, at your feet, hearing a word from you. Oh Lord, we, how can we ever thank you enough for not sparing your son, but delivering him up for us so that we can be saved, Lord. Lord, we are praying for that we will not lose our focus on Christ Jesus, who is able to do, according to his good pleasure, all the things which we can do here on this earth. Oh Lord, we want to thank you so much that we can never save ourselves. But you have allowed us to choose because you are so gentle with us that whatever choice which we make, Lord, you will honor it. This morning, each one of us in our hearts, we are choosing to save you. We are choosing to follow Christ. We are choosing, Lord, that we want to be your servants. We want to submit to you our will and surrender to you all what we have so that you can control and save us, Lord, the way you feel fit with us, Lord. We are so thankful that you have never abandoned us. You still love us, even yet we are sinners. You went on the cross to die for us. Say so for this morning, Lord, I pray for each and everyone on this platform. I pray for their families as well, including mine as well, that Lord, as now we are journeying in the last days of this earth's history, we are asking you, Lord, that you increase our faith. We are asking you, Lord, that we you humble us, Lord. You give us that humility of Christ. And above all, may you give us the mind of Christ that whatever, whatever we do, whatever we think, Lord, may be aligned to the kingdom of God. As we now depart from this platform, we are asking for a special Sabbath blessing. Lord, you want to bless your people because you, you delight in blessing your people. Therefore, Lord, we pray that you give us the peace which surpasses all understanding, especially this Sabbath day. As we go to our churches, Lord, you know the state of our churches. Therefore, we are praying, Lord, that whatever state we find in our churches, Lord, may we bring that peace of Christ. May we uplift Christ because you said, if I am uplifted, many will come to me. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you appoint your people who are going to break the bread of life, just like they used to, the priest used to bake the fresh bread every Sabbath. Lord, we are waiting for that bread today. And may we hide everything in our hearts so that we will not sin against thee. Bless us, Lord. I pray all these things in the loving name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Mother. Thank you, brethren, for tuning in uh, this morning. Uh, we look forward to picking up from where we left tomorrow morning by God's grace. Have a wonderful Sabbath wherever you're going to be. And uh, let's keep our focus on Christ. Amen. Amen.